Swiss people love to surf, from desserts to tennis balls. No matter if you visit for business, pleasure or tax evasion, we love to have you. But why Switzerland? Why is our country adored by British royalty, Russian oligarchs and even the children of dictators? Let's find out in Switzerland Says Sorry. I'm in the city of Zug, or as the locals call it, Little Moscow. The streets are clustered with the offices of Russian companies. They're everywhere. After Putin's invasion of Ukraine, the city has fallen on hard times, at least according to Zug's financial director. He says, it's a very difficult time, especially for the canton of Zug. Yes, never mind the shelling of Ukrainian children, the real victims are the people of Zug. Just look how they suffer. Horrifying. So why is the financial director of Zug so sad? Because he has to enforce sanctions and maybe freeze assets from his wealthiest taxpayers. And I'm not talking about space oligarchs or even the Swiss kind of oligarch. I'm talking about Russian oligarchs. And freezing Russian assets is like trying to freeze vodka in a freezer. It doesn't really work. Of the estimated 200 billion of Russian money in Swiss banks, Switzerland has frozen only around 7 billion. The rest remains hidden. Why? Because nobody seems to be looking. Neither Canton Zug nor the state. And in June, the government decided against establishing a task force that would actively look for it. So basically, we're hoping Russian oligarchs will turn themselves in. <laughs> yes, it's true. You've got me. I'm the bad guy. Here, take my money. But why are so many oligarchs in Switzerland in the first place? You see, getting a residence permit in Switzerland is hard, especially when you're poor or, God forbid, a refugee. But with the necessary cash, you can buy a golden visa. So far, a third of all those golden tickets went to Russians. Sure, many countries offer this kind of visa, but only Switzerland has it all. Stability, spacious bank accounts, and the emotional coldness necessary to not ask too many questions. Switzerland, hiding money and emotions since 1848. After Putin's invasion of Ukraine, the European Union quickly established sanctions. Well, sanctions. The Swiss government only slowly adopted those sanctions, uh, in, um... giving oligarchs time to hide their assets. Like Andrei Melnyshenko, 11th richest person in Switzerland, who quickly transferred ownership of his company Eurochem to his wife Alexandra. When Switzerland finally adopted the European Union's list of sanctioned people, her name did not appear on it. So Eurochem remains untouched. Also on the list of sanctioned people is Vladimir Putin's reported girlfriend, Alina Kabayeva. Kabayeva, an Olympic gymnast, was once called Russia's most flexible woman. Because when you're with Putin, your sense of morality needs to be highly flexible. Kabayeva and Putin are believed to have four children together, all born in Switzerland. Yes, Putin's most valuable assets are his children. Congratulations! Is it a boy or a girl? It's an asset. But Putin wouldn't be the first autocrat to hide his offspring in Switzerland. North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un spent 11 years of his childhood in Bern, and all this without anybody knowing who his father was. He went to an international school, played basketball and spoke Swiss German. He probably still does. So, hörst du, Kiele? Ich muss euch etwas erzählen. Mein Coiffeur, der spinnt. Ja. Er ist links am Rasieren, rechts am Rasieren, schnipp, schnapp, alles ab. Nicht einmal die waschen kann er. So if you ever meet a Swiss kid, be careful. You never know who they really are or what they grow up to be. Yes, nothing prepares you better for dictatorship than a childhood in Switzerland. And for this, we're sorry. This is not a message from the Swiss government. It's merely a satirical device and is in no way legally binding. Der geht jetzt go like und go subscribe. Ja, sonst klappt's. Jawohl.